Welcome to our podcast. This is Friends on Fire. I'm Mike. I'm a lifelong devotee of financial independence. I even wrote a book about it. And I'm Maggie, a newer convert, but just as passionate, especially on the intersection of minimalism and financial independence. We're one in the same. We are two like-minded friends who believe that talking about money with your friends and family opens the door to financial well-being. The Friends on Fire podcast is about dispelling myths, building financial acumen, and sharing your financial independence journey with the people you care about. This is Friends on Fire. Hey, Mike. Hey, Maggie. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. I think I alarmed you this morning because I, I first off, Mike has his new Bose headphones on. Those are the noise canceling ones, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you think of them? I, yeah. I mean, they're, they're nice. I got them for 40, like, 40 bucks. So after your good. Dell credit, they're like, yeah. what, three, 300 plus? Yeah. We just talked about them on our favorite things. Mm-hmm. Well, I talked about them. If you're ever, well, okay, a couple of things. One, I think they're great. They're actually so good that when you're recording, like I, I use them on the podcast too. Sometimes I have to like open half an ear because I'm, it's so silenced that I like can't tell how loud I'm talking. I'll just put it like over a half an ear, but they're just like, they, they're comfy. Uh, also, if you're ever just having a day where like the kids are being loud and they're doing their thing, but you just don't want to hear it. Just put them on with nothing on even and walk around the house. Mm-hmm. They're just damp. They dampen things i mean they more than dampen things because they're very (laughs) quiet but i love them when i'm just even when i'm working and you're not listening to anything but there's like noise upstairs or britta's walking around or whatever like it's just really i just find them to be really like soothing to wear with not even playing anything and then they're also great you know sound quality i mean bose would be offended by me being like i don't even use them to play anything uh, given that they're like known for amazing speakers and stuff. But this episode today is brought to you by Bose, our first sponsor. Sponsored by Bose, our first sponsor that doesn't actually give us anything like all of our other sponsors. OK, not our topic today. <laughs> but what's funny is I was like right when Mike and I got on the Zoom this morning, I was like I was just ready to go. I had a bunch of topics. I can't remember what one of them was now. And so usually sometimes Mike and I will like chit chat before we start recording, just when we get on video about just unrelated things. But then sometimes we'll start a conversation over chit chat. And then I'm like, oh, this is good podcast material. And then we'll like, I'm like repeating it. I'm like trying to rehab the same natural initial conversation. So even when I saw Mike's Bose headphones, I was like, can we just start recording? I was like, do you have anything you want to tell me before we start recording? As and though he was like, like, like as if I knew a secret. I needed to tell you. This used to be what we would do at work if there was like a reorg going on or something. And we'd be like, do you know about like, do I like, do you know about something? Is there something you want to tell me? Um, and we'd like both look at each other uh, and nobody would crack into, you know, like until we thought the other person already knew. And so Mike kept looking at me like, do you, am I, spo- are you, spo- do I know, are you supposed to know something? Am I supposed to know something that you're supposed to know? And I was like, no, I just want to get recording. And I was just wondering if you had any personal discussion first. And he just looked like skeptical, like he's supposed to tell me a secret or something. Well, I do know something. And oh, I will tell what you is after it? the episode. What? Are you serious? <laughs> yep. Oh, all right. Let's jump into it. All right. So we are not talking about Bose headphones or company secrets. This episode is inspired by an ordeal I had with a washing machine purchase and it all worked out. It was a mess uh, up until that point and proposed this idea to Maggie. And we wanted to recap some of the ways that you can get your money back or fight for for a company to make something right when you've been screwed over. And there's a lot of interesting ways that this can happen. And we have some very cool stories, I think, to share with everybody about our experiences in this area. Like can and should fight for your rights. Oh, yeah. To parte. I was trying to think of I do. I wanted to think of a funny title, but hasn't come up with one yet. Mike, the irony of this is. I don't even know all the details of the story, so I'm, I'm excited to hear it. But the irony is that this, from what I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, this new washing machine was a bit of a splurge for you guys. Oh, yeah. And so you you finally like splurge on something and then it's like becomes this big ordeal. So kind of my wife doesn't ask for a lot. She's very she's very frugal, doesn't have expensive tastes, but she's been kind of like putting the 
what's the what's it called like a bug in your ear what's hints the term out, put in the hint put drop in hints yeah drop in hints yeah. Put no, it's yeah, been a little a clearer than, than a hint she's been telling me she wants a new washing machine because we have this washer and dryer that we got when we lived in an apartment in atlanta you know well over 10 years ago and it's a top loader i mean it cleans clothes but it's really nothing fancy and i also think it's part of the culprit of your oh yeah ridiculously totally high agree. water bill i totally you have a, agree now we've exchanged d de- more detailed follow-ups one of our listeners actually that lives in my neighborhood sent us like told us his water bill and all of his kids houses water bills and some of them have sprinkler systems and they're all like half of mics so yeah. i'm super excited to like Me we're so. gonna don't worry guys we will fill you in on future <laughs> water bills on once the edge we of their get seats. some data wait for yeah. my water bill yeah so at the end of last year i'm like all right let's go do it and and decided to splurge, but we were going to find like a deal. And so the, the arrangement. You're going to splurge the Mike way. Yeah. Right? Well, yeah. Mike and Mikey Britta splurge. way. Mike and Britta, you're right. Yes. Yeah. Your, your wife is equally as frugal for those. If we've never been clear about that. Is from what I can tell, like a very high end washing machine is like $2,000. A yeah. mid tier one's $1,000. And then really cheap ones are $500. But I was like, let me go work this. And if we can find one for like five or six hundred bucks, like a a thousand to twelve hundred dollar one for five or six hundred bucks, we'll go get it. And so I'm like searching for a few days. I find the open box deals at Best Buy and like your local Best Buy or did you go to no, like Best a Buy online Best Buy? and then you can okay. see oh, where okay. these okay. items are located. Okay. And I found one that was a twelve hundred dollar washer, Samsung for 400 bucks and then with tax was like 430 and i'm like perfect i have to drive out to the best buy outlet it's in kennesaw so it's like an hour drive load this into my car Did drive you take it back the ford explorer all yeah. the way to kennesaw wow it yeah. can make it for a trip like that that's impressive <laughs> it barely made it that thing your washing machine is worth more than your car now i know it yeah crazy but keep going i'm in suspense okay so we get this washing machine i'm super happy it has a big dent on the side but it makes no difference to me. Like that is the concept of open box. Can we just quote, I'm super happy. It's got a big dent on the side. Like you're like happy about the dent because you know that dent saved you money and yeah, you don't care. Exactly. I, I kind of feel the same way. I'm like, if it still works. Yeah. Oh, uh, and, and just like as an aside, open box deals for any sort of any sort of retailer is like a really good deal because it's somebody who's like, oh, I don't like this color. And then they put it back, but they can't sell it as new because it's been opened and you can get a big discount on it. Or there's some minor cosmetic defect that that doesn't like it does not bother you you know that there's a dent. Now, worth noting on the Best Buy website in multiple locations, it gives you like the description of the open box categories. And it says in multiple places, very clearly does not affect performance. It is purely cosmetic. So I get this and it's like a little bit louder than I would expect. But like, hey, I've never had a nice washer. So like, what do I know? And Britta's like, it sounds loud, but they're not supposed to be loud. I have an old one in there. It's well, still yes, quiet. Maggie, I understand this now. But like <laughs> <laughs> this was my first nice washer. What did I know? That dent made it loud. Yeah. So we we have it for like a couple of weeks and it, and it works and it's like cool, but it's like really loud and I'm like, oh, well, I guess, you know, whatever. And and so I try like adjusting the levels of it and, you know, make sure it's flat and all that sort of stuff. And after two weeks, we've only used it a handful of times. It works OK, but the return period has ended. Plus, I don't, also don't want to like drive this thing back to Best Buy. It's like a, it's super heavy. I don't want to put it back in my car. Also, your car had one Best Buy trip in it. Yeah, not that's two. probably right. <laughs> not three. So after like three weeks, it starts to leak and starts to be really loud, like like a jackhammer it's hitting on the inside and we're like something's wrong so it's non-returnable to best buy i and i'm so i'm like well let me check the samsung warranty and i have samsung come out and they're super nice so I, they have very great service and they're taking a look at it they take it apart and then the guy comes comes to get me he's like well this is interesting uh this one was not only previously owned but we visited this unit in somebody else's house Here's the guy's name and here's the ticket number. And we had determined this to be unrepairable. So. <laughs> and now you have it. And now I have it. So I'm I have. press it worked for two weeks. Yes. So I have this in writing from Samsung and he's like, Best Buy sold you a broken machine. So I call Best Buy customer service and there's just like, there's nothing they can do. They're not empowered to like make, you know, exchange it. The return periods ended. No one's going to help me. I try calling the store. It's actually kind of surprising to me that like Best Buy wouldn't do something. 
Like I, I've had better luck with, I mean, not all the time, but like I keep going, but I am just saying I'm a little surprised that they, well, it's I, disappointing. I told you that this story ended well. So I know it ends well. I'm just saying I'm surprised Best Buy was as soon as you had that info. Well, from the Samsung, customer like, service oh agent gosh. who was, I think in India was not empowered to do anything. They have yeah. a script that the return periods ended. He's like, you need to call the store. I cannot get a hold of the store. Nobody will answer it. I call over days and days and days. Nobody will, nobody will pick up the phone. And so uh, I start thinking about what else I can do. I know I can challenge it on my credit card, but I also have an insurance policy on the, on the credit card. So I file an insurance claim and it's going through their thing. And I'm also like, this is just really, you described it as slimy, which I really, when I texted you about this, you were like, this is slimy. Yeah, so sleazy, slimy. Uh, I can't get a hold of anybody who's willing to help me in customer service. Can't get a hold of the store. The claim is going through the credit card. It may or may not be paid out. But I'm like, I'm going to do something I've never done. And I file a complaint with the Better Business Bureau because Best Buy on their website says it works perfectly, has no impact to performance. What clearly happened was that somebody either told Best Buy or didn't tell Best Buy and like return this broken machine. Best Buy didn't test it because they would have seen these issues um, and then just put it back out on the floor and sold it to me. And then I have in writing the manufacturer saying that it was previously broken before I went back to Best Buy and it was unrepairable. So I had like a very clear case. Yeah, like you got to believe like when Mike first told me this, I, I said to Mike, I was like, Matt, well, maybe it was an honest mistake. Maybe the people returned it to Best Buy and didn't explain all that stuff because they just yeah. didn't want to deal with that. But Best Buy, when you think about it, all the people that do these like open box things like it takes 30 seconds, especially when you have a relationship with the manufacturer to double check the mm -hmm. serial number. You're supposed to do all that stuff before you resell something. And so they had to have known. Yeah. Or which is slimy. they were they didn't test it. They were just being lazy and they... Well, you don't even have to test it. You check that number mm -hmm. and it would ding with Samsung as... I mean, that's like yeah. the you know power of data these days. Anyway, so who, who knows what happened? It doesn't so matter. So but... I file this complaint. Within a day, I get an email from some corporate team at Best Buy. And somebody's like, hey, let's talk. Let me tell me what happened. I provide some information. He's like, all right, um, well, what we can do is we can get... Like, would you like a refund? Would you like an exchange? And I'm like, I'd like an exchange. I get a call from another woman who I think is this guy's supervisor. She's super friendly. Her name is Terry. Hi, Terry. Um, she's at the corporate headquarters team. And she's like, here's some uh, comparable washing machines. Let me know which one you want. We'll get it. We'll get it brought out to you uh, within a couple days. And were they giving you the equivalent of value of the fact that you were getting a discount on this other one? I would have been fine with that. If they're like, here's another open box one that was like 400 bucks. I would have been fine with that, honestly. But that's they, what I mean. Where they get. Yeah. So yeah. We'll, uh, they were, yeah let me finish my story. Okay, <laughs> I appreciate your enthusiasm. Back oh, I want to know the value. They uh, they gave me a brand new twelve hundred dollar washing machine. OK. Um, different so brand. The equivalent of the style. But the yeah, but like yeah, you still got one. your good deal. Right. You didn't pay yeah. twelve hundred dollars. I right? did not pay twelve hundred dollars. Okay. I didn't pay anything. They brought it out. They took the old one back. They installed the new one. The guys are super friendly. But you still had to pay for the, you paid for the original open 430 box. 430 bucks. Okay, I never, they, I, I, I didn't checking. like get didn't my money back. back. They just yeah, okay. gave me a new $1,200 awesome. $1, washing yeah, machine. That's awesome. And they, they made it right. And good for them. It should not have gotten to the point where I had to like escalate it to the corporate response team in Minnesota or wherever they were. But they did fix it and make me feel good about the experience. And everything's great. That's great. Well, that was part of why I was saying I'm surprised you didn't get a better response from Best Buy. Because one of our tips, which we'll get into, well, the first one is like purchase from reputable companies, right? Companies like that, because whether it happened directly through you or through you having to like file a Better Business Bureau claim and then it gets to their corporate office, most of the time they do make it right. Right. They they need to they want to to continue, you know, practicing the type of business they do. Um, and so, you know, it does matter that you bought that from, you know, Best Buy versus you bought it from someone on Craigslist. You have zero That's repercussions right. to, you know, or Facebook Marketplace or a neighbor or whoever like you're, you're just kind of like you're taking your chances. Yeah. And so I really do like buying things from like REI. As an example, I mean, different types of products, they have an amazing return policy. They just no questions asked. Amazon. I know a lot of people have mixed feelings about Amazon. They have amazing customer service. 
Have you like have you dealt with their customer service much? Yeah, and I return stuff all the time. It's super easy. They're just yeah, they're great. They're very reasonable. I mean, we had something come the other day and it was like these ice packs and you fill them up yourself at home, which I'm a big fan of, by the way, because it's going to replace me having to like buy ice for every volleyball tournament and stuff. My brother has these and they're just like awesome. And you but you fill them up at home and it kind of like makes the gel. And so they're a lot cheaper to ship and stuff. And they like sent me the wrong size. It wasn't the size I ordered, but I didn't realize that. And the instruction came with like how much water to add to each size. So I added too much water. And once you do it, you're like, they're stuck. You screwed. You like mix the wrong gel mixture, basically. Um, and I was like, I sent Amazon a note. And I'm like, hey, I mixed the I followed the instructions for the size I ordered, but I didn't realize you sent me a different size. And it was a pretty big difference. I mean, they looked similar, but it was anyways. You're providing like, oh, so much context to Amazon. No and they're just like, whatever, lady, we'll send you a new one. Yeah. We don't care. <laughs> Wait till we get to the context part. That's my that's my favorite uh, advice from you um, of like people don't care about the context, you know. So you're, you're right. Most big companies that have a, you know, uh, a known public profile have some mechanisms in place to resolve these issues. And so the more you shop with them, the more likely you're going to have options for resolution. Regardless of who you deal with, the next piece of advice, no matter which tactic you take in our list that we're going to review, is save your paperwork. And this could be like you save your receipt. When they ship it to you, you save the return label. You save the barcode on the box. Like save everything for a period of time just to make sure that you have all the information you need in order to resolve an issue. Mike, in addition to saving receipts and paperwork, I also have a drawer in my office where I keep tags to things like clothing. And this has saved me. I don't keep them forever, but anytime, I don't even question it. Anytime there's like a, an expensive piece of clothing, like my kids got some Lulu stuff for Christmas. Um, my mom just bought me a few things that we reference on this trip. I keep the actual tag and I put it in this drawer. Because if you ever need to return something, like I bought a Lulu bag, uh, like a shoulder bag around like Black Friday. And then it was like a print and I hadn't really used it. Then I decided I didn't really like it. And so like in the new year, I returned it. And I just went into my thing and I was like, oh, I got the, I have the original tag. I have everything they need for a return, you know, that you can't return stuff usually without the like tags that came on it. Or if, if they do let you, it's like, it's really not helpful to not have the tags, but just like save the tags. There's no reason you can't kind of set that stuff aside. And then, you know, every six months or so, like clean it out, but it it can be really helpful to save all the things that were like attached to your product, not just the paperwork itself. The other thing is a lot of people, and it's just related to like the idea of keeping tags. A lot of people assume that they just can't return something, right? It, they're like, oh, I, you know, it's in a, and it's why I save the tags and the receipts to things. Um, but they just assume they can't. They assume it's too late. They assume, you know, that there is no resolution. Like, don't assume that. Like, go in assuming that there is a resolution for this because that, that I think is like half the battle is that like you give up before you've even tried. And so I think a big piece of advice is like, try when you start talking to these companies, it's important to be respectful, but also clear in what you're asking for. If you get on the phone with somebody and you're super aggravated and you're just complaining, not only is that person not going to respond to you, but they're not going to really understand what it is you want. So yeah. be respectful and clear. Also save and document all of your communications. So this is easy if you're doing an online chat. It's easy if you have email. If you make a phone call to a call center, make some notes on the date, who you spoke to, what you said, and use this to, our last point, build your case and be prepared to provide that evidence when you do find somebody who's going to be empowered enough to help you resolve it. Yeah, like I often forget to do this, but I'm dealing with like a whole insurance issue from last year. I forget to like write, like ask who you're speaking to. I mean, it helps to like have a first, you know, it's nice to be like, oh, what's your name? And they're like, oh, it's Kayla. I'm like, okay, thanks, Kayla. It like personalizes it too. But, but it is nice because then you can be like, when I call back and I'm like, oh, I spoke to Kayla two weeks ago about this insurance issue. And, and this was at a smaller practice. So they would know who Kayla is. But even when it's like Best Buy customer service, like you can ask for the customer service. They'll give you like a rep number and make sure, you know, then you can say, hey, I called on this date and I spoke to this person. 
And I've now called three times and, you know, you can be respectful, but when you save and kind of take some notes on those situations, it really helps. All right. So let's get into the specifics about the different ways that you can get your money back or resolve an issue with a retailer or vendor. And these can be done in any sort of order. You don't need to do all of them. Uh, we'd recommend trying one at a time to see what works. And also, if you have an existing relationship with a certain company, you might know what works and you don't need to bother with some of these other ones. Yeah, Mike, I like your one at a time point because sometimes a certain process won't work, and but you try it and then you kind of escalate and like move on to the next like you did with your washing machine. Like you mm-hmm. tried calling Best Buy, that didn't work. So then you went to the Better Business Bureau. So the first tactic is just to initiate a return. Most retailers will have a very efficient return process. And in many cases, you're going to get a return label, like a, you know, prepaid return label in the box. So they like, they don't want you to call the call center. They don't want you to mess around. Just slap that label on there and send it back. It can be super easy. Yeah. I, my reference is briefly earlier, Mike, but one of the things that you said on some episode or when we were talking like our like Christmas ago, return episode. Yeah, it was like I will I will really give like a return associate like my life story of why I'm I feel like I need to justify it like a lot. And Mike was like, they don't care. Just take it in. And like, be <laughs> they polite. want you to leave as soon as possible. And I started so they can go on doing break. that. <laughs> yeah, I started doing that. Like when I go to Target to return something like I'm some like my kids broke or something. I just like don't even I'm like, hey, how are you? I just need to return this. I have my receipt. They don't ever every now and then they'll be like, oh, is this broke? Or, you know, they'll ask like because they want to know which pile to put it. I used to work when I was at Home Depot corporate. We did six months in a store and we had a whole return to vendor process. It was like the RTV bucket. Right. And we just needed to know if it was like broken or resellable. Right. And so there's you are so right that like less is more and a band be ready to answer if they ask. But most of the time when you're returning things, they don't even care. They're just processing returns. They have a you know, whatever their policy is, it might be the number of days. Um, And I'd go back. We said this earlier, Mike, but I just think it's worth reinforcing. When you make a decision to purchase something in the first place, do it from a reputable company because sometimes you have a choice. Sometimes you're looking at something like I was just buying some like random things for my kid's play costume on Amazon. And even on Amazon, some of the different people that sell, Amazon has tons of resellers that sell through it. They have different return policies. I was making sure that I was clicking on ones that were like approved Amazon and they had like uh, the Amazon basically that they had free returns because not all of them do. Um, And so you can you can kind of like just be a little thoughtful when you buy something that's expensive or that's not that expensive to make sure that they have a good return policy. And sometimes you might make the choice to pay a tiny bit more to get something from a store that the exact same product, but like when you buy it from REI, you have the backing of, you, you got to deal with REI, you, you get the pleasure of dealing with REI on that return and not having to, you know, go back to some online, re- other online retailer or something. And in addition to reputable retailers, reputable manufacturers will have very good manufacturer's warranties. And it's important to save the box it came in, save the warranty information, save your receipt, save all the paperwork like we discussed. But a lot of these companies, they want to help you. They don't want to go through the retailers. They want you to work directly with them. And it's easier for them and it helps. It's part of their brand image that they will replace or repair certain items. You know, we talked about my Le Creuset cast iron pot that my parents got at their wedding 45 years ago yeah. and it just broke and the manufacturer was like here here's a new one 400 bucks and that yeah, was you like didn't super even easy buy it. i didn't even buy it and they sent me a brand became, new one became it was the owner of it it was right. incredible yeah, you could have gotten one at, you could have picked up one at goodwill yeah and they still honor the warranty of it because they're you know they stand behind their products that much and so there are a lot of companies who feel very strongly about this who will go above and beyond to make things right for customers if you are respectful and you go through the appropriate channels to make your request yeah patagonia is another example i love them i had an issue with my jacket and it's like a couple a few hundred dollar jacket it's like my winter jacket and they a a year or two ago and i made sure to do it in the summer it was actually during covid so they were really backed up but i did it during the summer when i wasn't going to be wearing it anyways um there's something wrong with the the zipper and and some of the even if you need like a patch or you have like a tear in it they'll fix it but they have a whole process online. You ship it to them. Sometimes it just can take a while. So you have to be patient, but it's free. And I got my thing back. And if they can't fix it, 
they'll give you an equivalent discount and credit towards something else. And they have a whole process around that. It's really nice. One of my favorite examples of this is I had a Marmot rain jacket oh, yeah. that I actually, I got at at and It was like sitting in the break room. It was like some at and Olympic sponsored jacket, but it was like really nice. And it was a women's jacket and I gave it to Britta and she loved it and she wore it for a long time. And the inside started to like peel off or something weird. And so I was like, oh, well, why don't I see what Marmot will do? And so I put in a, uh, a warranty exchange. I shipped it back to them and they're like, we actually don't make this jacket anymore. But here's like $150 credit. And I got a, a new jacket for, for both of us, um, which was incredible. And uh, and it just like they didn't care about the backstory, but they had manufactured. You didn't give them the whole break room I, I did not tell them I found it in the break room, but I'm not sure they cared. Like AT&T had bought this jacket from them. Something happened yeah. to it and it stopped working and they wanted to make it right. And I ended up like buying more stuff from Marmot afterwards. Like I, I can see why it works for them. Yeah, you can see why I love Patagonia. Yeah, exactly. I buy my underwear from Patagonia and I've yet to have to try to deal with them. I've ha- I mean, I've had it for like. It's amazing. It's like great travel underwear. I wear it every day and it's, I'll put a link in the show notes for anyone who's interested. To your in, underwear. Uh, the, yeah, the uh, Patagonia. They're not quite granny panties, you know, you know that term? Yeah. Uh, they're like a little nicer than that, but they make really nice underwear and they have, I've, I've yet to have to deal with the warranty. I feel like it's going to get awkward if I have to deal with the warranty on those oh, yeah. if there's an issue. Like I tore these. Like, Let me tell you what happened. It's super uncomfortable, <laughs> but I think or it's more important. just like they're really gross and worn out. Can I get a new pair? Yeah. But so here's another example. And it's like your marmot one. My mom has this Bose CD player and it's really old. I mean, it's a CD player, but it's like a night. It was nice back in the day. I think me and my brother bought it for her when she moved, when like sold her house and moved into this uh, condo that she lives in. And it's it doesn't even have bluetooth it's that old you have to like plug it just play cds or you could plug in like an audio jack to the back and it like started skipping and i went and i was like oh mom let me go to Bose. let me go to the website i like typed in the serial number they have a whole process and they basically said hey like it was a automated thing but it was like hey this is basically like too old and out of warranty which is very fair it's, it's probably 10 years old and um, but they said, but we, and it was a very significant discount. It was kind of like what Marmot did for you, except they gave you actual like cash. But they basically were like, here's some similar products we sell now. And it was a, a they were heavily discounted if I wanted to purchase a new one. I didn't in this case because she has a different thing that she can use. Um, but th- that's why I say about like, just assume that there is a resolution, right? Because my mom was like, this is broken. Can you get rid of it for me? And I was like, well, First, let's go see what Bose will do about this. They might actually replace it for you. So it's, I just, you know, it can't hurt to try and it can't hurt to do. A, it took me one minute of research on yeah, Google to go easy. find that and find the site. And Okay, what's next? All right. Next one is call customer service or visit the store. Now, these jobs are hard. When you are working in a store, yeah. when you are working in a call, call center, that is a hard job. And, you know, you worked in a Home Depot for six months. When I joined at and I managed a call center for a year and it was like eye opening. Those jobs are so hard. And people are mean. <laughs> They're, and people are mean. And, and even when people are nice. I don't mean the, the customer service agents, by the way. I mean, the people yeah. calling in, they're like angry. They're pissed off. They're not the most nice to people. Aside from this whole concept of like how to get your money back, like when you're dealing with somebody in a store or call center, you have to be nice. Just like, please be nice. If you're one takeaway from this episode, just please be nice to them. But it it also will help you. If you call in and you are angry with them, they're not going to be willing to help you. They're also probably going to have a hard time understanding what it is you want. So be nice. Be very respectful. They will show that respect in return. And then also just be clear with them. Uh, about what happened and what resolution you want. If you want a refund, just tell them you want a refund. Don't like make games. Don't try to squeeze them for more than you probably deserve. Just be very clear and specific about what you want. And chances are they're going to find a way to help you. Yeah, Mike, I had a couple issues. I think I posted some Instagram stories about this in terms of um, calling customer service and just being clear about what I'm asking for. Like, I've had some issues with credit card travel hacking where 
I wasn't used to doing it. Like you're, you're very, you know, well seasoned at it. And it was new for me. I used to put all my stuff on the same couple credit cards. They were all on auto pay. And all of a sudden I had these new cards and I actually like forgot to pay the bill because they were with my existing. It was like the card was through Chase or Amex. So I just assumed they were all on auto pay because I was already set up with my other Amex card on auto pay. And then I like got, I got like a late fee because I was like, oh, I haven't paid this bill. I was like, oh, came in the mail. I don't like, I kind of go through my mail, but like, I don't even know. I think it was an email. Who knows? <laughs> but I called and I'm like, hey, I am so sorry. I, this is a new credit card. This is the first month. I, you know, and, and at that point they're like starting to charge me interest, like a bunch of things. And it's all my fault to be clear. My fault, my bad. But if you're just like, if you're just honest and you kind of fess up and you're like, hey, I'm a good customer. I've never not paid my bill before. They can see that. They often will say, I see that you're a good, uh, not even good customer is the right word, but that they won't, if you constantly call to have late fees removed, they will not do it. But if it's like your first time, they will do it. Almost, I've never had an issue where my first time making a mistake like that, they don't reverse it. Um, and I did the same thing with Bank of America recently. Apparently, I had some sort of checking account that required, was only free if I had a balance over $10,000. For anyone who hasn't been listening, I don't have a job anymore. So my checking account balance is not that high and because I don't have direct deposit coming into it. And I've been funneling everything into Wealthfront high yield savings. So I don't keep much in my checking. Anyways, uh, Mike's eyes sometimes bulge when I get into these long stories. He's like, where are you going with this? So the point, my is, point is, it's all I your fault, Bank of but America. you were nice. It's my fault, but it. I call. Yeah. And I'm called and I'm and she's like, oh, you have this type of account. You want me to just change you to this account? It's only a $1,500. And I kind of said to her, I was like, I don't have a job anymore. I didn't get into why. Don't worry, Mike. I didn't give her that backstory. But it helped to say, I didn't say I was, I wasn't like, oh, I'm unemployed. Like I lost my job. I just said, I don't have a job anymore. So I don't have, you can see there's no direct deposit coming in. I'm not going to be able to keep that balance. What are my other options? And she was like, oh, she was so nice. And she was like, oh, this other account. And I was like, well, what, what, why didn't I have that in the first place? Like, what are the benefits? Why did I was kind of curious. So I was like, why was I even in this, like, what what benefits am I losing? And she named a few and I was like, uh, I, I'm not even sure I'd call those benefits, but thank you. And like, please move me to that other account. And she was like, and and I didn't even have to ask for her to remove the fees. She was like, I'm also going to remove those fees for you. I was about to ask, but she, before I even asked, like did it because she realized, you know, I don't need those fees. Um, so just don't be, I, don't be afraid to ask. Even when it's your fault, a lot of these companies will fix things for you and they'll make it right. And I am loyal as a result to these brands and companies who have, you know, done right by me. So calling customer service is usually a great first step. And in many cases, you can get your issues resolved. The other thing you can do is you can take your question or complaint to social media. And because of the public nature of social media, many companies are going to staff those teams differently. So I spoke to a friend of mine who's led this for uh, a few different companies, and she had some interesting notes about this, which sort of makes sense looking back on my own experience interacting with agents on social media. She said that depending on the brand's strategy, you could either get enhanced support, such as real-time response, or dedicated manager-level care agents who are empowered to resolve issues versus somebody who might be overseas at a very low level who could possibly give you a $25 credit but can do nothing else. She also said that a company's strategy here can tell you a lot about how much they value their customers and could be an indication if you should be doing business with them longer term or not. Some companies are going to be using bots, which are not helpful at all, and you probably know when you're talking to a bot versus a real person. And so if you contact somebody on social media and you get a bot and you can't get a real person, or if you get a manager who's like, let me take care of this for you. Let's talk offline or let's talk in direct messages and they resolve it for you. That's like a really good indication of the company's strategy related to customer service. Yeah, I think that's a great example. I've actually posted things on social where I wasn't even trying to like get something. I was just kind of venting. Like I posted something about some Bombas socks of Greg's. I was actually kind of bragging that like Greg wears his socks out so much like he wears them so long that there's like holes in the bottom of them and i just thought it was kind of funny and i posted it and bombas like replied to me and was like you know we have a like lifetime warranty on our socks like if you basically they like told me the process and like said we could get some new socks i don't think i even did it for i don't remember why but you should um, do it maggie well get some free about, socks there was something about at the time i actually i like a different kind of socks now 
So you I don't will like, get some like, replacement bombas, bombas and give them to me. Then they okay, are perfectly okay. acceptable for me. Um, oh, I think actually by the time I told Greg that he was like, oh, I already threw those away because they had so many holes. And I was like, oh, well, I need like the socks. I need like I need to like uh, there was something I needed. But anyways, the point is, sometimes you're not even trying to get anything. You're just like talking about it and you'll see how responsive a company is. And that makes me again, it makes me feel good about bombas. I'm like, oh, cool. They got like really good customer service. They stand behind their products. All right, so we have uh, a few more tactics you can do, and we will uh, we'll try to go through these <laughs> kind of quick, even though we have some more pretty good examples. Uh, you can dispute the charge on your credit card, and most credit card companies are really good at this. American Express, in my experience, has always been the best. But you click on the charge, you say like this wasn't delivered, it was they were misleading, it was broken, whatever, and and put that on the credit card to go challenge it on your behalf. It will come off your bill. The credit card has some process where they go review it with the vendor or give the vendor an opportunity to dispute your dispute. Nine out of 10 times I've done this, I get the money back without any issue and it's super easy. Uh, I made like a very dumb mistake very recently. I was booking my summer trip to Norway and I was trying to get like train tickets. And I found this company that was like, you know, first on Google when I was searching it was called Rail Ninja, which turns out to be kind of like a scammy type thing out of Malta. And so anyway, I mean, like it's called Rail Ninja. I know. It's like not it, like a clue for you. It looked legit. OK, um, <laughs> it was dumb. I, I I admitted that it was dumb. So I booked this train ticket in Norway. You're they're supposed to when what they do is like you book with them. They go then to the specific rails and go buy the ticket and give it to you. Um, and then upcharge you. But, you know, people say like, well, they're kind of weird, but typically it works. But w- we're so far out from the time when the rail line opens that like they couldn't even book it. So like I booked this, it's processing, it's processing. I know I'm not going to get this train ticket for six months. Rail Ninja won't refund my money. I just put in a dispute, get the money back that day. The resolution goes through. I'm not charged the uh, the fee. And so this was a great example. I made a mistake by choosing this vendor. The vendor did not deliver the product that they said they were going to. And so I got my money back. This is a great, easy, low effort way to get a refund. And like, how long was that whole process from start to finish? Uh, I got the refund that day. And then the credit card does like some, they give the vendor an opportunity to respond. And if they don't respond within 30 days, it's a permanent credit. And so that was it. Got the money back and haven't heard anything since. That's cool. I don't know that I've ever filed a complaint. I knew I could dispute a charge. I don't know that I've ever actually had to. You I've should had try like it. actual fraud. Well, no, I've never had to. I mean, like I've never had a situation where mm-hmm. I needed to. I've had actual fraud and that's kind of handled differently. You get like sent to a different department and they flag it differently and stuff. But in many cases, the process though is the same. Like you click on it and you said like, I don't know this was yeah. not me or the vendor did not deliver the product or whatever. I've not had to do that since there's been apps. I'll put it that way. I remember like a long time ago having to like call about something. It was around when my uh, uh, identity was stolen actually. So related to that with disputing a charge with a credit card, you also... A lot of credit card providers, almost all of them, provide various types of insurance for purchases made on that card. So an example is if you keep your one of my favorite ones, and we've we've talked about this in the credit card benefit episodes, um, which I can't remember the episode of, but we'll put it in the show notes where we talked about all the benefits on your credit cards that you probably don't realize you have. One of them is many cards have uh, various types of insurance for like rental car coverage, cell phones. Um, now you there's you have to have put your rental car on that credit card. You have to it, this matters for your cell phone. You have to have your monthly cell phone bill on that credit card. You don't have to buy the cell phone on that card, but you have to keep your monthly service plan bill on that card. Um, and they offer a pretty it's a usually they just all outsource it through a third party, but it's an actual insurance company. Um, and there's an online process to fill out a claim. And Greg had to do this recently. He cracked his screen pretty bad and he had kind of been dealing with it for a little while. And then he finally was like, I got to get it fixed. It was a very expensive repair too. It wasn't one of those just like, sometimes it's like a hundred bucks to repair your screen. It was $400 to repair his screen. And he had that card on our Amex Platinum business card 
and he got it repaired. It was $381. There was an out-of-pocket $50 deductible. Um, and he had to pay the whole amount up front to go to the place to get his, you know, phone repaired. Um, but then he submitted the claim and it took it did take a while to get approved. It was kind of in queue, I think, and took a couple months. But once it was approved, he got a check within a week and he got a check for $331, which was the total repair cost minus the $50 deductible. And like you're not having to pay for it through Apple Care or other things. Um, and so those credit card insurance benefits are legit and you should take advantage of them when something does break. It, it works on products too, Mike. Have you ever used it on like, you could have used it on like your washing machine perhaps mm -hmm. if it broke within it because it extends the warranty of certain products. So there's two types of products that you can get with a credit card. One is an extended manufacturer's warranty and the other one's insurance and they operate differently. Insurance is a regulated industry. I've also done the the cell phone thing. I've done it a few times. And one important note, going back to our initial, you can only do it once, right? Per uh, no, well, no, you oh. could, they, they. It depends on the policy. Like uh, cards I've had have like two claims per year, for instance. Yeah, but you're right. you need There's to save like your paperwork. Phone. So if you go to the Apple Store and they're like, it's a hundred dollar repair, you need that paperwork. And if you don't, you're not going to get that claim approved. So it's important to keep track of this stuff. All right, last option. And there's Which brings more you full circle. full circle. Brings us full circle, right? File Back a to the complaint BBB. with the Better Business Bureau. This was the first time I've done this. I've known about this group, but I've never actually done it before. The online interface is super easy. They are very responsive. They actually know like who to send these complaints to. And when I got when I got this whole thing resolved, I, I asked this woman at Best Buy, like, well, what exactly is your group? Because you've been great to deal with. And she's like, I'm on the executive escalation team we handle complaints for attorneys generals the ceo and the better business bureau i mean this was a legit <laughs> group. yeah we we had one of those teams at home depot it was a very dedicated team and anything that got escalated up like that um went to them and i think a, i think most big companies have something like that yeah now i i think the reason that this worked out well for me is that i had a very clear case i had all the paperwork and i was respectful and clear in what I was asking for. So going back to our like initial set of advice, but I was super impressed with the whole Better Business Bureau process and the resolution. Yeah, that's awesome. I kind of forgot about the Better Business Bureau, honestly. Like when you had mentioned that, I just was like, oh, I didn't even think to like Me too. I, I, I was I was all out of options and I was like, what else can I try? And I tried this and it kind of led to this episode because yeah, I was I was awesome. just so inspired by like how well this worked out. All right. So I hope this has been helpful and will inspire everybody to like see what options are available when your socks get holes in them, your washing machine mm -hmm. breaks, you drop your phone. Like there are ways that you can go get your money back or get items replaced. And uh, and hopefully this gives you some important steps that you can go take to get those done. OK, so let's wrap this up with our top three takeaways. Number one, companies usually try to do the right thing. But when they don't, fight for your rights to try to get what you deserve and should get. Number two, behind all these companies are still people and you should treat them with respect. Yes, kindness goes a long way towards resolving these matters. Number three, leverage all the tools at your disposal to make things right, including social media, your credit card, customer service. And just, you know, like we, we rattled off a lot of different options here. You might use one of them. You might use multiple of them. You might have to try you know, they might be sequential where you, you know, try a few things and see what works and good luck. So thanks everybody for listening. If you've been challenged or inspired by what you've heard, please rate and review the show. You can also subscribe to make sure you never miss an episode. If you have any thoughts or questions, we always love to hear from you and you can leave us a voicemail or text us at 404-981-3370 or you can hit us up on Instagram. And a huge thank you to a bunch of people who left us awesome reviews in the last few weeks. So big thank you to all of you. All right, Maggie. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. Bye. Bye.